Chapter 3 Setting up controlling area Setting up controlling area is as important as setting up a company code or any other structure in SAP. Controlling area What we do in controlling area? Creating controlling area Maintaining controlling area Maintaining the number ranges Maintaining the planning versions Activating controlling indicators It is advisable to create a controlling area by copying from controlling area 0001 which is SAP standard controlling area which comes with the ECC package. This copies various control tables and reduce a lot of further tasks. However, you can create it manually but it may or may not copy all the tables and backend configs so it is advisable to copy 0001 then customize creating a controlling area as we as we suggested in the last slide it is advisable to copy the controlling area so controlling area can be copied only with reference to a template here SAP made it mandatory so that we can copy a template while creating our own controlling area preferably choose the template controlling area company code this will copy the controlling area as well as company code after copying you can change the parameters like name description currency fiscal year chart of accounts in the next step maintaining the controlling area changing the name of controlling area as desired choosing the assignment control this has an impact on the currency type as assigning chart of account, fiscal year variant, and cost center standard hierarchy. This is a one to one relation where controlling area same as company code. There is one company code and one controlling area. This is used when there is only one company code in a controlling area. The company code must use the same currency as controlling area system defaults currency type 10, which cannot be changed later on. Cross company code counting. This means there is a lot of company codes in a controlling area where the relationship is 1 is to n. There might be multiple company codes, multiple uh, multiple company codes across multiple countries. You can assign more than one company code to the controlling area provided they share same chart of accounts and fiscal year variant. If you choose currency type 10, all the company codes must use same currency. 10 is company code currency. If you choose currency type 20 or 30, the company codes can have a different currency than controlling area. Activating the components and control indicators. This is the most important stuff you do in controlling. Here are few tips. When you activate the required components like call centers with activity type, order management, commitment management, profit center accounting, projects, and sales order if it is required. COPA module, profitability analysis, need not be activated here. COPA is activated while configuring profitability analysis. That is a separate sub-module and is out of scope for this lecture. Here, all currency indicators it is advisable to switch on this indicator so the system updates the value not only in controlling area currency but also in object currency and transactional currency. We'll see this in, in, in our demo in, in the le next lecture. Here this is just an understanding how it works, why we do this. Assignment of company codes. Here we assign the various company codes under the controlling area as mentioned before they must share the same chart of account and fiscal year variant maintaining number ranges here you maintain the number ranges for various business transactions in controlling each type of transaction is denoted by business transaction example coin this stands for primary posting from fi this step is not required when you are creating a controlling area by way of copying the number ranges are automatically copied. Maintaining planning version. This is 
another area which requires a little attention while configuring. Planning versions are required for planning expenses in overhead management. Version 0 is the basic version which records plan as well as actual. You can have multiple versions like V1, V2, V3 etc for having say rolling plan every quarter. However, version 0 is a basic version and ideally the planned expenses in version 0 must not be changed. This is a standard practice in SAP. In this step, you assign the plan version to your controlling area. To enable actual posting in overhead management, you must maintain version 0 for the respective fiscal years. That means each fiscal year will have a version 0. You can have multiple versions, but the transaction, day-to-day -day transaction like planning, planning happens in version 0 and it is comparable to the actual since version 0 is records actual as well as planning. Similarly, to be able to plan expenses in any version, it must be maintained for the respective fiscal year. Okay, so let's see what are the important indicators. This is an example of a uh, uh, SAP screen. We'll be going through this uh, in our demo. This is just for your record. I'm, I'm uh, pasting this screenshot and sharing this. In this, you see these two tabs planning and price calculation in planning we see a couple of uh, options like version locked integrated planning copying allowed exchange rate etc here i would like to mention one one thing in integrated planning in integrated planning the check mark the tick mark which decides like what kind of planning data we wanted from cost center accounting component or the activity costing to other components. So line, out do line item documents keep a record of every planning change. Okay, so this function does the following. All available plan records for controlling area, fiscal year posted as line items. The system posts these line items to other accounting interface. So by checking this, we are telling the system to do the real-time integrated planning. The other tab is price calculation. Before going to that, I'd like to talk about this tab, exchange rate type. In this, typically most of the companies I have seen, they mention is P. P is the standard translation for cost planning. For example, when does a company do a cost planning? It basically starting of the year or starting of a period. So when do we cost planning at starting of the period, we wanted the exchange rate type to be tied to that day. For example, if we plan for a cost allocation or cost planning or budget planning on beginning of year on January 1, 2015, we wanted system to know, okay, if $1,000 and we planned, we have another company in Canadian dollars, so we wanted those Canadian dollars to convert to US dollars on certain date. So that should be the beginning of the day, year or beginning of the any date or beginning of a fiscal year usually. That's the reason we don't mention here any other exchange rate type other than P. Price calculation. In this tab, we have a couple of uh, tricky options like purely item price, method, actual methods, revaluations. So it depends what business wanted. There is a couple of options like for, for example, on, on first check mark, if you see here, this indicates only if you set allocation price manually during activity type planning. If the indicator is active, price calculation gives a purely iterative price as well as price resulting from planning. The system calculates purely iterative prices as if no manually set price exists, meaning that it determines separately purely iterative prices for all activity types on all cost center in this version. Methods. This is the planning method. This has two options, either periodic or average. 
this basically controls what kind of activity type need to be used either we should do periodic or we should do average this is actual this has three options until unlike planning which has two options in in actual we have periodic average and cumulative and how do we reevaluate there is three options here again option 0 1 2 0 says not evaluated 1 all actual activities evaluated with actual price 2 revaluation re in the original transaction that means all actual activities revaluated with the actual price original allocation changed the difference between allocation evaluated with actual and plan prices are not shown in this option So this is just the basic overview of setting up controlling area. We'll be going in detail on our upcoming lectures where we'll be describing what are the key components of each individual areas while going through all our uh, next lectures. Hope to see you on lecture 4.